All right, so I guess we could just like, do you want to just run through real quick and we can get an idea of where we're at and then we can, uh, so we'll just make this quick and then we'll, we'll come back in and go over it again. Maybe like the end of the week or so, we can just do something. You, okay, you guys, I'm in, I'm in another meeting, so if you need me, just scream really loudly and put something in the chat, okay? But I won't go away until you have a quorum. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. So, um, first thing we're going to talk about is the referee thing. Um, I don't know if I've talked to you guys about it, but uh, it was, I guess it's 20 bucks. Something for the ref, like that's what South Jersey does. I'm not entirely sure what we do, it's right around that. Um, but I was going over, I was over at a early, like talking to some high school teams, and I was like, Yeah, 10, 20 bucks for officials, blah blah blah. Like, we need high school kids, and it was just kind of cricket. I was like, Well, you know, it is new times, like maybe 30 bucks, and then I got more phone numbers. <laughs> so, so I'm like, all right, maybe this is this is something we need to consider. So in, in my selling point was like, you know, you know, we hold them more accountable, get them there like 20 minutes before the game. So it's it's two hours of work, whatever, 15 bucks an hour. When I was making that when Dave Scott 15 years ago was on the email. So like I pay 15 bucks now since there. Um and then the other kind of selling point I have is like these are you know, they're they're local high school athletes. So I'm throwing them a you know, an additional ten bucks. Uh you know, that that's helpful for them too, I suppose. So that was that was my something I wanted to discuss this group and kind of feel people out. And uh yeah, if anybody had yeah, any ideas about that. I support that. You gotta pay them a decent wage, make it worth their time. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. And like you, go ahead. No, like you said, if it if it makes it adds for the accountability, and if they're gonna show up a little on the earlier side, and it, it all if it pencils out, that all I'm good with it. Cool. I'm sure like Wayne and I had kind of discussed it a little bit too. So um, yeah, we'll keep in touch with him, and maybe we'll see what he does say when we end up voting on it as well. Um, okay, so that's cool. Uh, next thing is like checking in with soccer. Like, Jake, you're out in the you're out in the front lines. What's what's the like out there? Soccer's good. Soccer, we had a good turnout. I think we had there were 17 kids this past Saturday, so I think almost everyone but one was there. The coaches are happy. Um, they like playing at the elementary school because the playground is there. So for siblings or for the kids after practice. Yeah. Um, he appreciate the field being lined and you dropped off some more shirts was good. Yep. Uh, he thanks you for that. He gave out socks. Um, I'm not sure if Rec provided those or if he bought them, but yeah. he had socks this weekend. Yeah, we provided those. Rex had the okay. Yeah, he didn't say he just gave them to the kids and um no, everything's going really good. They had fun. It was uh kids being kids. Yeah, that's good. That's that's good feedback too, that uh the guys are like in the kids are like and having that, that program right there. That's good to know. I think well. it's good for siblings that are there for the hour. It gives them something to do. It was much yeah. is a distraction. It's also good for the kids, yeah. um, for family members. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. That's cool. Uh, get a kick out of seeing Paul and like Andrew and those guys doing jumping jacks and all sorts of stuff. It's Love to see those guys in a, in a PE classroom, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> too funny. Um, cool. Yeah. And I know like Christina's team, they're, they're out to a hot three, and zero start. So I'm uh, pumped about that too. We, we were still on it all front. Nice. What was that? Oh, sorry. What did you say? Did you say nice? Oh, no, I said nice that they're off to a three, and zero start. I didn't realize that. Yep, yep. So, cool with that. Okay. Um, yeah, just some more soccer updates. Like, that wreck death thing, that was awesome. Uh, got a lot of good feedback about that for, for sign-ups being Um, You know, all, all the scheduling, the roster stuff, like, I'm able to just type that in and show that on the visual for everybody. So, I'm loving that. Um, so, 
something that I'll do that I didn't do this time was instead of just entering it for like, like just, you know, like as a program, you can do it as a league. So instead of just like, uh, like you see, we lead one, two, like playing Saturday at noon or whatever it is. But it'll end up saying like, we lead playing Airfield at that time. So we'll see which team they're playing too. So you'll be able to specify like, okay, this is a practice, this is a game. Uh, who they're playing again. So that would be, be kind of cool. Um, I figured out how to do that just like a week ago. And I was like, well, let's go you know, ahead with things for each team. We'll, uh, we'll do that again for um, basketball. Get that going. So um, that's like a regional Christmas time. Um, scoreboards. Next thing, this is actually, this is something we're going to have to have like a good quality meeting and get everybody together. Um, we have three estimates. So two of them are from this company, Nevco. Um, they're more, they're not local, but they're right. uh, they might be from Connecticut or something, but anyway, Nevco and the other one's Spectrum, and they're out of Texas. But, so the Spectrum one is more expensive. It's fifty-five hundred bucks, fifty-five thirty. Um, it's a big part of it's the freight. That's almost a thousand bucks. But some of the things like I, I was like, why? You know, why are you charging two bucks, two thousand dollars more than the other guys? So I, I don't think we actually go with this one. But um, they were just saying like double the warranty time. Um, it's winter tight seal, so they can blend weather conditions. Um, longevity is something that lasts more than 20 years, so that's what they were selling with that. Um, so maybe you know, obviously, it's probably a little bit better of a product, but I don't know if we necessarily need something like that. Um, the other one, which I think these are the ones you should actually explore. Um, so you have this like the 1610 and they are quite similar. I think the only thing is it's like, uh, I think it's just bigger. But otherwise, I think they're the exact same thing. Maybe this one. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, very close. But one of them is 4,100 and the other one's 3,100. So... Oh, yeah, here it is. It's dimensions, obviously. So this one's 10 by 4, the one that's more expensive, and the other one's 8 by 3. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's the answer to our question. So that's something we'll have to talk about. Like, do we want to spend the extra time to get something bigger? Like, whatever, do we want a visual? But apparently the 1610... Uh, that field, like there's Memorial Hall and Old Deerfield, kind of like you're driving down five and ten, and there's that softball field. Okay. They put in a new scoreboard probably like five years ago now. Um, and he said that's that scoreboard. So for a visual of that, I don't know, next time you're going to Greenfield or something, uh, check it out. But I also reached out to the DA guy, their maintenance guy, to see like how you know if they've had any problems with it like that. We'll get some good feedback from him um, and see if that's where we want to go. Uh, yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll talk more about that. But that is something I, I definitely do want to pull trigger on going around this year. Because baseball is here before we know it. So at least kind of have our ducks in a row so that, like, I don't even know. Like, do you think we should try and get that in? Like, is that something you want to try and get in before winter? Or do you think right at the beginning of baseball? Was when we're trying to do that. I would think if you can get in this fall, it's one less thing to do in the spring. Yep. If the money is there, and I know there was a donation, was it a donation? Yeah. For yeah. it, so almost kind of better spend it sooner rather than later. Yeah. Just so it doesn't, you know, look like we're not upholding our end of the deal. If that makes yeah. sense. Yep. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and the way things are pricing, 
in this world, everything's only going up. So who knows how long those quotes are good for too. That's another good could be next, You know, who knows? Could be another few hundred dollars, $500 in the springtime. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. But if you're going to spend the money either way, just I'd, I'd get the ball rolling on it if, if everyone's on board for it. Are we'll you guys talk talking about the timing on the scoreboard? Wait, uh, what, John? Were you talking about the timing on the scoreboard? Yeah, like were we talking about doing it this fall and getting it out of the way? My two, my two cents is that you do it right away. Cool. Um, and, and if you can get it up this fall, then you don't have to worry about the mud and crap in the spring because getting vehicles on the diamond sometimes is dicey. Yeah. Um, and then we can also report back to the, peop- to, the, to the person who fronted the money and she'll be thrilled. And good PR is not a bad thing. Three. Okay. I like that. So that's, that's a good system right there. Um, so we will we'll plan on that, and then we'll make that official vote on um, about which one we want. Does anybody have a preference? Like, do you think you spend the extra grand, or, or are you satisfied with? Like, I, I think our donation, I think that was for just over, it might have been three grand, it might have been 3,500. I think so. Well, how, uh, much is the, how much is the gift? I forget. I want to say, was, you know, I'm just remembering from back when. I want to say it was like 3000 Yeah. I like traditional, you know, the, the, the more and the ease of use, whatever is the easiest to use. Because I think you, you might end up having some parent be, be pulled into running the thing or some kid. And and I know that there's always a training process for the basketball court, and for some reason, and that's an old one, and it's and it's not easy. But I would just make it whichever one's easier. Okay, so they should be like exactly the same. These, um, it's just the size, and I wanna. I'm trying to see. If it's got to be in here somewhere. Like, oh, okay. so. Yeah, literally the only difference is um, one is eight by three, and the other ones, uh, the other ones. So is that extra area? Is that worth a thousand bucks? Yeah, that, that's a big difference. I mean, you're talking twenty four square feet versus four by ten versus forty square feet. You're almost fifty percent bigger. That's a huge. I mean, when you're looking at something from a couple hundred feet. I think it's if, if the money is there and, and, and rec can support the difference, you know, I'm not sure actually sure where we are budget wise, but I would spring for a large. You're only gonna buy one once, hopefully for the last year 20 years. Plus, you know, it's, at the end I'm, of the day, it's not that much money if, if you can swing it, but I'm not sure what the bookkeeping looks like right now. I, I'm with Jake on this one. You you small if it looks too small, we're gonna look like amateur hour. Okay. Hey, go big or go home. That's what I tell me it's guys. Perfect. All right, sweet. So, do we, like John? What do you think? Can I start? Can I start moving ahead on that, or do we need to vote on which one we want? We have a quorum right now, so we're good okay. to go. We have seven people on the committee. Or how many people do we have on the committee right now? Uh, seven. No, you have seven, but it's a it's a non-person committee, and I think the quorum is based off the nine. Is it based off the nine or is it based off the, the, the seven? I'm pretty sure I got, I just talked to Lynn and she said it's based off the nine. Can I phone Wayne in on speaker? Sure you can. It's COVID time. Yes. Yeah. We got to have five. So we get Wayne on speaker and just get Wayne to say yes on four by 10. Then he can go back to work. Does that work for you guys? That works for me, yeah. Do you want me to get him, Jake, or do you got him? Uh, we got him on speed dial here. Okay. Calling from Amy's phone, so he should answer. The other thing? Hey, I got you on speaker with everyone. Yeah. We just need your vote, and then you can go back to work. We're three by ten, or three by eight, or four by ten for the scoreboard. Because Jonathan Edwards is on, so that makes you make the fifth person. But but you know what? Hey Jake, because this is recorded. Yeah. Let's. Yep. Hey Jake. Yeah, I'm here. Because we, we're, it's being recorded, let's make it formal. 
Skinny, oh. what's the uh, what's the formal thing? What are we what are we voting on? Uh, we are formally voting on the scoreboard uh, purchasing to place the Hurley Heat Little League field. Okay. Then you got to call way. out each name individually and tell them and, and ask for a yes or a no. Okay. Let's start with you, John. What do you say, Mr. I, I, I say yes, and, and I'm sorry that it's a stupid rule that we have to follow. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just the <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, Jake? I'm a yes on the four by 10. Yes. All right, thank you, Creator. Thank you. Shelly Yags, what do you got for me? I'm a yes. All right. Spectacular. I'm a yes as well. Uh, Wayne Gowski. Wayne, you hear him? Wayne, yes. All right, go back to work. You go with Wayne, guys? Yeah. All right, see ya. All right, took care of that one. I'm going back on mute. All right. Thanks, John. Okay, cool. So that's, that's progress right there. I, you probably should have done the referee vote too while well, you yeah. had <laughs> yeah. We'll do that one. We'll do that one super fast. So, um, all right. The other thing, and that's probably something we want to kind of talk about with Wayne as well, um, is moving forward to basketball. Um, just kind of some stuff to make sure that we have um, any coaching ideas, like who, who's around for that. Um, start getting an idea of numbers. That's going to be the good thing about Rec Desk. Um, you know, I can, every single person who signed up, I can reach out to them and say, hey, basketball, you know, basketball signs are open. And then just, bam, they're all going to sign up because all they have to, they only have to answer all the input, they press the button this time. So, um, so that's going to be really easy to register. And again, like uh, send an email to the school, like make sure the teachers are putting it up on Parent Square or whatever it is, uh, just to you know, maximize getting the word out. But yeah, that ought to be easy. Um, like Shelly Riggins has been playing basketball on the tournament, right? Or at least has some of the best. Yep. Yep. Uh, like, are there some coaches that you have in mind or like some specific stuff that you um, know the team will need kind of thing? Um, so, again, I'm so sorry. I don't know why my audio was so bad. Um, but I think that you were asking about players and coaches and kind of feedback. Yeah, just like if you had any ideas about coaches, um, you know, stuff that you've, like, the, that the town has hooked the teams up with in the past kind of thing. Uh yeah, so um, I know that for the fifth and sixth grade team, the gentleman that who will probably coach is just Justin Gendron. Um, I don't think he had an assistant last year, um, but if the, we get the numbers, the same amount of kids that came out last year, I think we had for third and fourth, I think we had 13 kids. So we were really teetering in between, um, you know, should we keep it as one team or should we take the chance and try to split up into two? Um, yeah. Basketball historically has always pulled more numbers, I feel like, than, than, than baseball and soccer. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think that we'll be in good shape for actually all, all three teams um based on what i remember from the past hey shelly are you suggesting that with 13 kids we would only have one team i'm not suggesting that that was the decision that was made last year we had a, we we had 13 kids and um it, there was a lot of debate when um justin davis was the head of rec whether or not to break it into two teams or keep it as one and their decision was to keep it as one and again, I'm just basing it on my experience as a, you know, I coached basketball a lot of years and 13 kids, the playing time gets, it's hard to keep a bunch of 10, 11, 12 year olds, however old they are, um, calm. And with 13, it's hard. It makes practices wonderful because you can practice, you can have great practices, but game time, 
parents and kids get very frustrated because because they're showing up and they're watching their kid play for five minutes. So listen, I <laughs> I don't want to go down a rabbit hole with this, but I think that just in my experience with Waitley Rec and having my kids play on these sports teams, um, as well as having a lot of conversation with the other parents, there's been a little bit of turnover with Waitley Rec. And there are some coaches that um, take very serious, like the rules of rec. So to give you an example, it doesn't matter if a kid had four or five years of basketball experience and then a kid had zero, you know, level of experience or years of experience, they were to get equal playing time per the rules of, of rec. Sure. Yeah. So that, that again was a decision that, that came down to the, to the coaches. They, they had tryouts and, I know that another point of contention is whether or not kids should be able to be moved up if the numbers are needed and the skill level is there. Um, I had nothing to do with that decision of the 13 kids being put on one team, but. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, playing time, equal playing time until you get to that Sunderland basketball tournament, equal playing time is equal playing time. And it, and it should be the rule of the road. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't agree more. And we, we've always done it. I don't know. I don't remember any, any coaches that did it. Otherwise, maybe they did. And I wasn't aware. No, but to your point with 13 kids, that gets, it gets. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, and you will lose kids because of a lack of playing time and they're not improving their skill set during games, et cetera. I, I, I guess I would err on the side of six and seven. And then if you need a third or fourth grader once in a while to just be a body, so be it as long as they take their team more serious as seriously, then they don't feel like they're, the balls of the world, excuse my language. Uh, no, but so, so I guess just to kind of high level overview for basketball, the numbers have always been, been, we've had a nice turnout, but there has been some in, inconsistency with the coaching. And John, I don't know if you were aware, but um, so Adam Camp and Chris Skrosky were, uh, were coaches for Waitley Rec for a number of years. Um, and then they actually ended up taking their two boys out and they went and joined the, it's like a Hoyo Catholic HCC league. I think it's called, I'm not sure, but they're like, they went and they're in a whole nother division. And that's where Waitley Rhett got put in kind of a predicament because when we lost those two boys with those two dads that had historically always coached, that's when we went from 15, where we had a solid number where we could have the two teams um, to 13 and, you know, the decision was made just to go with the 13. So. Yep. I, 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 I feel your pain. It's, it's a CYO league. CYO, that's it. And it is parents may just make the decision that their kids are, are not going to play both and they should play both. I believe. I know I always made my kids play both. What's um, CYO? It, well, it was, you know, it was either CY, uh, it was either a CYO league or a um, suburban league, depending it, upon the gender and, and the era. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's CYO. That's like the the Christian Hoyoke. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and I, I just, it, I don't know. It makes me sad when people don't don't find the time to do both, but that's their choice. Um, I, I just think that having a team of 13 is really hard. I, I agree. It was just, and again, um, I had no part of making that decision. It was just where the cards fell. And I think that, you know, the coaches made the decision and Justin Davis made the decision, you know, to the best of their ability. That's the other thing that I, and again, I don't want to monopolize this and I don't have a dog in the fight anymore. And so I'm just basing it on, on history. When we let coaches make the decisions, it's not a good formula. We need to make the decisions and tell the coaches how, how it's going to work. We just do. You know, it would be like, it, it would be like coaches saying to parents, Hey, how do you want to do this? Oh my God, what a disaster. And there's gotta be, there's gotta be a, 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 a formula that, that we, that we stick to. And I, I just think that we need to make a decision as a group based upon the number of students, uh, players that we have. And if we need to call up a fourth grader once in a while, then you call up a fourth grader once in a while. Yeah, no, and I understand that, John. And I think that, you know, some like I'm getting, if I'm hearing you correctly, I'm, I'm hearing two different things. Like, let's have a formula, but let's also be able to be fluid. 
And I think that's where we got jammed up two years ago was because the rec and weight, we, the coaches were trying to follow the formula and the formula kind of dictated to have the one team of 13 players. I don't have the answers. I'm just kind of trying to give, you know, the, the perspective of what happened to two years ago. Well, I mean, you know, I, 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 I think the formula of, of, I don't know whether it's a formula or not. I just think that a team of six and a team of seven is always nice, especially if the coaches can agree to practice with each other at least once a week. So that practices are, are, are there's defense and offense. Um, and if you, if you have to call up a player, you have to call up a player. It happens in every sport because we're small and we have to do that. I, I yep. I, I agree. So it's up to you. I mean, I just, I, I voiced my opinion, but I'm going to let you guys decide. Cause again, I don't have any kids there. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the less kids, um, the better personally. Cause I know if I were a kid, and I was putting time, especially if I were a kid who was like one of the above average players and I'm splitting time with everybody and my time's super limited because there's 13 of us. I mean, I definitely get pretty bummed out. Um, you know, so I, I can, I mean, obviously I'm 30 now, but I can still, I can still kind of relate to that. So, yeah, I, I think that, that's definitely a good, good protocol. That, you know, I share the numbers with you guys. And talk about yes, I think John's got a good idea there about not having approaches. Um, you know, I, obviously communication, I mean, I'm big on that for sure, but um, I thought that was a good little comparison, like coaches asking parents. <laughs> sort of thing. Um, yeah, like this year with the dreams wanting to do soccer, like, yeah, it's already kind of a good example. Like there were 18 kids and they only, they played four on four two games. But, I mean, I was thinking like, hey, maybe we got to go two teams here. And then, so I reach out to the coach and she, you know, I would be good and, and maybe you you know and it's still working and all that but then it got up to 20 kids so and it's like 20 kids on one soccer team when you're playing four on four that's that starts to get tough you know and it's a lot to manage for that coach especially if like an assistant coach isn't there that day or something like that um you know so I'm always yeah I always just kind of believe you can find the bodies kind of thing um, and make if you can make an extra team go ahead and make it because it's more playing time for all the kids, which is really that's the only thing you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's something we can definitely uh, keep in touch about as basketball time for kind of long. Um, is there any, do you guys have any suggestions about when to open that, like November 1st or anything like that? November 1st sounds good to me. I'm trying to recall two years ago, traditionally, when basketball practices start. Yep. And I'm thinking it's right around that time. Like, usually, is it there like a week or two before Thanksgiving break? Like, practices before Thanksgiving break? I don't know, to be honest. I didn't play rec basketball growing up. When, when I was in, they went this is three years ago, but we started – um, we, we would have tryouts before Thanksgiving or not tryouts assessments. So we could make even teams and then, uh, coaches would start right after Thanksgiving and they'd have about a month of practice before games would start early in January. And some coaches would try to do pickup games just to get kids going before, you know, over the holidays. So it sounds like that November 1st date would work to open it up, Chris. Cool. High school sports that winter season starts like that. Thanksgiving. Um, in Washington? Gives my one less thing to worry about during the holiday. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep in touch about that. But okay, November 1st, we'll put it up. And that makes sense because the last day of stock is October 30th. So it's just like, yeah, right into that. Cool. Okay. Um, as far as like what the town provides for those teams, like, um, 
do we hook them up about 10 basketballs, make sure everybody's got, like, are we getting real jerseys or, like, jersey t-shirts, like what we did for, you know, like, what, you know, what we have kind of in our possession? From what I recall, we could definitely use new basketballs. I feel like, you know, all the kids would try and grab the two that were like the best, the best basketballs. <laughs> um, um, I think Mrs. H is in possession of the the Waitley Rec basketball uniforms. Okay. Do we have uniforms for three, four, and five, six? Yep. It was no, I'm sorry. So uh, uniforms for third and fourth, fifth and sixth, and then the younger kids would do uh, weightly basketball t-shirts. Right. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, how many basketballs do we have right now? Cause we used to have, we, we, we're not going to, we, we, we've never strove in. Yeah. We, we've never had a goal of a basketball per kid, but we always had between, you know, five and six basketballs per team. Okay. So, you know what? I take that back. What I said, I'm just, I'm going by what was in, what's in the weightly elementary gym in the in the crates but the coaches would bring in the, like their own bag of balls okay so i have no idea yeah. on what and, it was five or six. And, and and i don't know where those are anymore maybe they're in the barn i i don't know but if we need to buy some we need to buy some i mean the town office maybe isn't there like after the soccer balls where we're back there is there basketball back there too no nope, no idea okay <laughs> Right, well, we got, we got a month of uh, investigation. So. But Wayne might know because didn't Wayne coach last year? He did. Yep. Yeah. So he he'll know where some of them are at least, if not all of them. I feel like he might have been hooting and hollering about how like, literally no basketballs came back last year. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, they, they they do seem to grow legs. The basketballs. Definitely. Uh, weren't too concerned about specifically. Okay. And you can get good basket, really good basketballs for, for you know, Wilson, nice basketballs for $25, $30 a pop. Okay. At a sporting goods store that'll give you a bulk rate. Yep. Yeah, my man and I, Jim down at Jim Edelman down uh, at Wick Sporting Goods, he's, he's awesome. They're, that's who I go through for baseball, and that's who we started going through with. Waylon. He's just a guy down in Springfield for a long time. Really, really good people. And like when I need something quick, it's just like, damn, you know, he drove right to the house. <laughs> like, it's, it's awesome. So, and then Justin came up with tours. So, um, but yeah, okay. So I'll start. Okay. That I believe that was everything on the agenda. Um, anybody got anything else to add? Questions? Ideas? The only thing I wanted to talk about at some point, we don't have to do it right now, is um, and it's probably too late, but we've got to figure out the large diamond infield. Yeah. So that's well, like okay. So like we're gonna have that. Like we're doing that contract thing with with Frontier, but like even if we do that contract with Frontier, it, are they going to come over and dump a bunch of loam in that infield? Like I don't think they're doing that for us, you know. So I feel like you know Jake and Wayne have, have talked about it. If we want to like actually do it, yeah, I'm, I agree. We got to you know start over real soon. So time to kind of pull trig i mean but that's going to be a lot of money like where's that money? well the, the money would come from it's going to be a few thousand dollars and it's going to come from our revolving account um and the um and what and what what i think should probably happen is that 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 billy should uh call brett gawanter and say hey brett will you guys do the dirt for us but like I've been talking to Brett and he's just he's tired of it because he's like I keep you know like I keep doing it for what you know like why do I keep doing that yeah I get it you know like you did the softball field over early and then you walk over to the softball field in the summer 
and you got weeds growing up the fence and all this stuff. Or I don't even I don't know if he did the stuff. He's been he's been talking about how like all the stuff he does just kind of goes to crap, and he's and like who who decided that he's the one responsible for all these fields? You know? it, yeah, it's always been a request. That's all. It's not. I mean, no one. And he does it out of the kindness of his heart. But if, he, if he's tired of it, we, we should stop asking him. Yeah, um, that's, you know. that's kinda, I'm with you on that. And I just think it's like somebody, I don't know, like somebody needs to officially be like, in, like you have to have like a legitimate resource you can rely on here. And, and like Brett, like let's say we reach out to Brett, like we're on his time. Like I want somebody to be on our time. You know, I either want it to be like Frontier, you guys are paying for this, you know, just here, or like we're going to pay for this, and Frontier, you're going to pay us more to use our facility because we're actually like we are keeping these. I, I would tell Frontier, we'll pay for the for the for the for the uh, for the mix if they if they do the work, okay. if they know how. Yeah, well, that's. God, don't go down that road. I mean, <laughs> I, I didn't know that there are weeds growing on the fence of the softball fields. Aren't they supposed to be doing that? Well, that's that's what you would think. But then I'm talking to Marty Sanderson yesterday. I was golfing with him, and we're driving back. And he said, "Well, why would?" And like he's just kind of playing devil's advocate in that. But he's like, "Why would Frontier take care?" softball fields in the summertime we're not using well because who takes care of their fields i mean fields aren't being used in the summertime but you got to maintain them i mean maybe and he's right maybe right maybe we need to hire a landscaper to to to, and 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 maybe we need to to sort of sever our ties with frontier except for you know they pay us the thing and we have to figure out how to maintain the fields but it's going to mean an increase in fees so wait so quick question guys quick question did like Prior to this, did was there ever like a contract on whose responsibility it was to take care of Hurley? Unwritten. Okay. And and the, and have adding the softball field has added another dimension to it, obviously. So who so Waitley Rec needs to speak with somebody with like over at Frontier. Would that be Bill Hildreth? Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that was so on an so you know through okay so I, I just think that we need to know who the players are to get together to maybe have something more formal than the wonkiness. So I've I've spoken to Brian about it. I have to get permission from the state to be a part of it because I'm a conflict of interest being the baseball coach. Um. But then, and then I've spoken with Modesto about it, and I've spoken with Billy about it. Um, and that, like, we're just kind of waiting to get together. You know, I, I should probably speak with Brian and kind of touch base on where he's at um, with that. Yeah, that's that's something that's got to get figured out, you know. Because hey, hey. you drive by that Little League field, you know, like, I gotta, I gotta go grab the hoe and I gotta go do this. So like, you gotta get the edge of that into because it's just like, what are we doing down there? Yeah. You know. But at the end of the day, I want to know officially, like, is that my job or is that is that frontier supposed to do it? And they're just like, no, we're not doing it because that's what they do. I mean, those maintenance guys, it's it's unbelievable. But yeah, so that, that's I just want to officially who's responsible. I know that Brian's been trying to put together a meeting with Darius and, and me and you. I don't know whether that happened and I and I missed it, um, but let's just do that and let's let's have a, 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 a come to Jesus conversation about who's going to do what and get it done. And if we have to, if we have to bring in a landscaper on our own, it just is going to mean we have to add to fees from somebody. And well, and so Frontier's talking about getting their private people to maintain their fields because the guys they have now can't do it. So they're paying somebody, you know, paying two people however much to have these, you know, facility whatevers. And now and now they're gonna go pay a, a, a private organization to do it. That's like what they're talking about. 
So they, don't that, do I don't get that, but okay. But is that what it is? It's just a to-do list so long and we don't have the manpower? Like, I, like, yeah. I don't know. I have no, I have no idea what any of this entails. <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, yeah, there is like mowing, I mean, mowing early, that is, yeah, that, that takes a while for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, you do, you need, yeah, you need an organization. Um, but it's just like, yeah, Frontier's getting their private guy to like go drop Rome on the basketball field and, you know, cut out the infield and do all that stuff. If they're paying, if they have a guy, is their guy now doing our fields? Like, is that part of the agreement? So that's something that, that needs to get figured out and discussed as well. I kind of feel like we just stop. Like maintain the field, and like you're gonna do this, 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 and this, and use them. Like, like, <laughs> like don't, don't worry about my kind of thing. But again, that's all my rabbit hole. We got to go down with the right people for sure. Um, but there's stuff that needs to be figured out right away. And, you, you know, and I don't, I don't want to belabor it on this meeting because we're not going to solve anything. But you know, we did we did Frontier a big favor by adding a softball field so that they had a, a good one to use, and it was totally on the town of Waitley's dime. And we did it on, on on behalf of our 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 students and the students from the other three towns. We didn't ask anyone for any help from the other three towns. We did it, and I don't. It's not a quid pro quo, but I also don't want the people to go run around thinking that we never do anything because we invest an awful lot of money and resources into these fields. Yep. And that's so, a great point too, John. And I was completely unaware of that. So it, it it just you know, and I and I take a lot of pride in that softball field, and I and I hate hate it when it when it doesn't look good um, because that cost this town a lot of money, and it was well worth it. But um, and 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 I know that the softball coaches at Frontier really value that field because it is the best field in the four towns now for softball. So, um, Chris, I got to go, but why don't you guys, why don't you, why don't, why don't you and I set up a time with Brian and, and Darius and, and, and just have a powwow and figure out what we're going to, who's going to do what and, and, and put it in, put it in writing and, and go from there. Uh, I agree. Okay. All right, you guys, I'm sorry I brought up that, that uh, can of worms. I apologize for that. So. I, but I do have to run now. So thanks, you guys. No worries. Have a good night, John. Bye. Good night, John. Yeah. So, like you're saying, that's that's a but. Like, and it's a good point by him. Like, we we got to get the ball rolling on that right away. So I'm glad that he heard that. He was making that happen. Well, it does. Um, Oh yeah, we good to go. We good. We're right. good. Hey, I was just curious, Chris. How how many yards or tons is that um, large diamond going to require to be spread? Is there a standard amount? Let's Google it right now. Okay. Good night, I'm just trying to figure out how big of a job it is. It's a bed. Okay. 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 Night, Shelly. Uh, Okay, so what are we looking at? Total tons of loan to spread. All right. How the hell do you spell loan? Loam is L O A M, but it's it's an infield mix, right? So Okay. I'm not sure what the term is for it, but like the Oh, Amy says stop recording. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> uh, says recording. Are you worried you enough people? I don't know. Now it still says recording. In the top. Yeah. Like, oh, we can continue the conversation later on, Chris. I was just curious how I'll ask Wayne what usually how oh on 
muted. I hit something. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can't see. I don't know what I did. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, let me let me, let me just Google it real quick, and we'll see. So total total time of infield mix. Oh, there we go. All right, I'm back. I'm trying to think, is it going to be like 20 yards or 50 yards? Or yards. 16 yards? Yeah, 20 times 16 yards. That makes sense? Yeah, so that's, that's one triaxle dump truck of infield mix through the diamond and the base pass. Give you an idea. That's what so that'd be 16 yards. Okay. I'm just trying to gauge how much work it is when we ask people to do it or we end up doing it or whatever the case may be. Okay. But um, when do you uh, – like, when, what is the first step forward with that? So, like, you'll touch base with this guy and, and see what we're looking at for a price? Well, I, who are we even getting it through? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, what do you, like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Like, what's your first step to get our hands on? Want to let Wayne know about it, if not tonight, tomorrow morning, and see who historically how they did it and the purchasing and get prices on it and availability and then figure out a way to apply it. It sounds like we're not going to get the help to do it in the field's in pretty tough shape. Yeah, no, I agree. It's like, it sounds like with how wet it is down there, it's something that they want to do also in the fall. So it's turned, you know, it's easier to get the spring going. One less thing to do in the springtime. Definitely want to get it done in the fall. Yeah, I mean, but something we could do with with labor anyway. Like we can. I mean, shoot, we get like six six thousand together, like enough to to make it work. Like, or you need just like you and Wayne. Like, what? How many guys? You need? Yeah, it's not. I don't think I'll talk to Wayne about it. Yeah, I don't think it'd be that bad for us to spread it out. If Wayne was good with it, I, I could do it. I can bring the kids here down there. It's only one truck because I don't think we're gonna get the help to do it. It sounds like it sounds like Frontier's done. But I don't know, I'll talk to Wayne about. It. We'll see. We'll see what the availability is, and kind of go from there. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. All okay, right. appreciate it. All right, Chris, sounds good. And uh, Amy, thank you for the help getting it going. Appreciate it.